Hello everybody and welcome back to another program. My name is Carly and today I'm going to talk to you about skyscrapers, those super mega tall buildings that you see in cities. So New York City, and more specifically Manhattan, has some of the world's most famous skyscrapers. And I'm going to talk to you about a few of those uh, buildings today. And we're going to go through the history and how uh, architects and engineers are able to build such tall buildings. And then I'm going to show you ways in which you can build your very own skyscrapers using things that you can find around your house. So I'm going to start out by showing you a picture of New York City today. Or this is the uh, Manhattan skyline with all the very tall buildings that you're all very familiar with. But believe it or not, New York City did not always look this way. We did not always have skyscrapers. Uh, back in the mid 18, 1800s, New York City looked a little more like this, very rural. So up until the mid 1800s, people weren't able to make very tall buildings, uh, let alone skyscrapers. Most of the buildings that we had were made out of wood or stone or materials that weren't very strong or durable. So most buildings kind of capped out at around seven stories. And um, the population uh, size of most of our cities did not demand kind of the need of any taller buildings. Uh, so this is at the junction of Broadway and 8th Avenue in 1862. So you can see there's a lot of room to grow and lots of smaller, shorter buildings. And then we fast forward a few years later and we see more and more people starting to move into cities, specifically in New York City. And we see that they're kind of running out of room uh, to put more buildings. So the buildings are uh, a few stories high, a few floors high. So because they're running out of uh, land to put the buildings, what they decide to do is build up rather than out. So they need to figure out a way to build taller buildings. So what they do is they start building uh, these taller buildings using iron, so a metal. And they make these iron frames, and they're a bit stronger. They're like a nice uh, strong skeleton for the rest of the building to go on. You can see this, the iron frame here and then the outside of the building, which is made out of stone. But unfortunately, iron still was not strong enough to withstand many, many floors. Uh, so as you build higher and higher, the weight of the building gets more and more, and the iron was not strong enough still to uh, kind of hold up the building and its many floors. Oops. So what they um, decided to do is in the uh, mid 1800s, around the 1850s, something called the Bessemer process was discovered. And that allowed people to turn iron into steel, which is very, very, very strong metal. So now people were able to make uh, buildings that had more and more floors that were able to support all of that extra weight. And these metal beams made out of steel were put together using metal rivets, which are these circular objects right there, and metal screws and bolts, which is in this picture right here. And they were able to secure the metal frame to the ground using a very strong foundation. So this is a drawing that shows you a typical foundation for a skyscraper. And what they do is they dig deep down into the earth and they put metal piers, which support the rest of the layers of the skyscraper. So we see the metal piers down here and then lit different layers of granite, rock and brick to support and then the metal beams up here. And if I move to the next picture, we can see an example of them constructing a foundation for a, skys for a skyscraper. And we see right here is the street level. So they had to dig very, very far below street level to make the foundation. And you can see the metal piers 
sticking out right there. And this is another example of an older sky, skyscraper that I'll actually talk about more in a second being built. And you can see more of that steel, uh, that steel frame, the steel skeleton. And then they put the stone on the outside of the building. So they're still using stone to build, but it's not uh, so much a structural element, more as a, uh, more as a like, decorative element to still give the look of a stone building. So there was another kind of uh, technological impediment to building very, very tall buildings. Uh, so if you had a building with 20 floors, would you want to walk up all 20 floors up the stairs? Probably not, right? So they need to figure out a way to make a safe elevator to get everybody up and down to the different floors. Now elevators were in use. Um, but uh, by the 1850s, they weren't uh, very safe. They were mostly used to transport freight, so objects from different levels, uh, because if the pulley that was pulling the elevator platform up and down broke, oftentimes the platform was sent plummeting down to the ground, so it wasn't very safe for people to travel on. But that was until a man called Elisha Otis actually developed the first safety elevator. And he patented the safety elevator in 1852 and then installed his first elevator in 1857. And this elevator had a braking system that kept the elevator platform from crashing down if the cable snapped. So I have an example of that here. So we see a man on the platform and we see the cable up here that was pulling it up and down has snapped but that triggered the braking system. So the braking system basically caught on these metal teeth right here and caught the platform from falling down. All right, so now we're gonna talk about the world's first skyscraper. And believe it or not, the first skyscraper actually was in Chicago. So this is the home insurance building and it was built in 1885. Unfortunately, it no longer stands, but it was designed by William LeBaron Jenny, and it had 10 floors and 180, and it, was, and it was 180 feet tall. So this is considered the world's first skyscraper. And nowadays, most people consider skyscrapers, uh, buildings to be skyscrapers if they are 12 floors or more tall. Now we're gonna talk about some of New York City's famous skyscrapers. This is the Flatiron Building, and it is the oldest still standing building in New York City. It was built in 1902, and it has 22 floors, and it's 307 feet tall and it was designed by Daniel Burnham and Frederick Dinkelberg. And I mentioned that it's the oldest still standing uh, skyscraper in New York City. The oldest skyscraper, the first skyscraper that was built in New York City was called the Tower Building. It unfortunately no longer stands, but I have a picture of it right here. And it stood from 1889 to 1913. And it was 11 floors tall and 128 feet tall. And it was located at number 50 on Broadway. But unfortunately, that one no longer stands. But I just wanted to show you, going back to the Flatiron Building, the unique shape. So it was actually built in a wedge shaped, so you can see right here, to fit in the intersection of Broadway and Fifth Avenue. And I have a picture to the left, which shows a building that's actually at the end of the building where it curves to make the wedge shape. All right, so after the Flatiron Building was built, when we move into the 1920s, there was something called the Race to the Sky. Now, this was an unofficial competition between, between architects and engineers to create the world's tallest building. 
and they kind of uh, competed uh, making uh, buildings that were taller than each other. They went back and forth and added more and more things on top of their buildings to try to get that title, world's tallest building. So the next two buildings I'm going to show you were built during this time. The first building is the Chrysler Building, a very recognizable building. It's, it's actually my personal favorite building in New York City. This building was completed in 1930. It has 77 floors and it is 1,046 feet tall and it was designed by William Van Allen. My favorite detail is the top, the um, Art Deco kind of motif on it. Kind of looks like crowns or rays of sun shining off the top. And then of course we can't talk about the Chrysler Building without talking about the Empire State Building, which, was, which is probably the most famous uh, building in New York City right now. Um, most people would consider the most famous. It was built in 1931. It has 102 floors and it is 1,454 feet tall. And it was built, it was designed by the architectural firm of Shreve, Lamb, and Harmon. And the Empire State Building was the world's tallest building until 1970 when the twin towers of the World Trade Center were completed. So for a very, very long time, almost 40 years, the Empire State Building actually was the world's tallest building. So during this time in the 1920s, uh, when the workers were building the buildings, uh, they had to kind of uh, work around kind of very dangerous circumstances because there was not a lot of safety uh, regulations basically uh, in the 1920s and 30s for building these skyscrapers. So I'll show you a few pictures of workers working. This is a man working on the end of a steel beam. Looks like he's putting some metal screws and bolts in. And you see the Chrysler building in the background. So there's no harnesses or anything like that. So they were up extremely high working. And of course, we have the famous picture of the construction workers on the metal I-beam eating their lunch. And you can only imagine how dizzying it would have been up at that height. And then we have some other workers uh, working. We have a kind of a platform right here that they're standing on to get to the outside of some beams. So we're gonna fast forward a number of decades to a building that was built quite recently. And it is One World Trade Center. So this building was completed in 2014. It has 97 floors and it is 1,792 feet tall. So it actually has less floors than the Empire State Building, but it is taller than the building. And it was designed by David Childs and Daniel Liebskind. And it is actually the tallest building in the country. And it is sixth tallest in the world. All right, so now that we've learned a little bit about skyscrapers and how they're built. I'm going to show you a few different ways that you can actually challenge yourself and build your very own skyscraper at home. I do have a question. Sure. Obviously we use more safety equipment today, but are the construction techniques the same? Did you know that? Um, that is a very good question. I don't know the answer off the top of my head. Uh, but I can definitely look uh, into it a little more and see what kind of techniques they use today. I'm sure they might use a little bit different techniques or different materials, and I can get back to you on that one. All right, so all the materials I'm going to show you are things that can be found at home. The first uh, kind of technique that you can use to build your own skyscrapers is using marshmallows, which everybody loves to eat, and toothpicks. Um, now the toothpicks act as the um, steam uh, as the steel beams of the building 
And then the marshmallows act as the rivets or the bolts that hold these beams together. And the way I constructed it was I just made kind of triangular shapes. And then I stuck them together using the marshmallows. And I started building up like that, kind of connecting them and making sure that they were all stable together. And I mimicked the foundations of skyscrapers by taping my building to the plate so that it was nice and stable and secure so it won't topple over quite as easily. Another technique that you could use is using popsicle sticks for your beams, which is, I gave an example here. And then I used um, pipe cleaners to kind of tie them together. I just wrapped them around, made sure it was secure, it's pretty secure and those act as the beams and the rivets and bolts. And then my final example are straws and tape, which are pretty simple. What I did is I cut my straws about in half like this. And then I took some tape and cut it up into strips. And then I would cross them like this Hold it together with your thumb and then just tape the ends and just wrap the tape around. It's not the prettiest, but it does the job and it's pretty secure. So I would just tape them together like that and then tape them together to make kind of a cube shape. And then I taped them on top of each other like this. And if you really want to challenge yourself to make a skyscraper, what you can do is limit the amount of supplies you use. So you can only limit yourself to maybe like a foot of tape that you use to build your whole skyscraper. And if you want to take it even further, you can make the outside of the building as well. What is often stone on skyscrapers, what I did is I just drew some windows and made a door on this index card and you can design kind of the outdoor um, decoration of your building, kind of just tape it like that, if you'd like. Alrighty, so I hope you enjoyed learning a little bit more about skyscrapers. I hope you maybe tried to build one of your own, try out some of these techniques. Remember, you can use any kind of material that you might find around the house. And I hope you have some fun uh, building your own buildings. Thanks.